Hey everyone, uh, my name is Emily. I am currently the um, interim product designer for uh, the plan project management stage. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how I think about balancing product consistency with more substantial UX changes. And we'll talk about that sort of in the context of improving the experience of viewing and editing uh, work item attributes. So before I get into that, I want to give a little bit of oops, okay, there we go, a little bit of context of uh, what is a work item anyway, um, because this was something that like when I first um, came into plan, this was sort of a big question I had as well, um, and you can really think of work items as more of a framework. Um, so work items are really just an architectural system that was built to support the various types of items that we have within GitLab um, and basically make these types easy to extend and customize um, while they share the same core functionality. Um, so if you've ever heard the term issuable, um, issuable is sort of like the legacy work item. Um, many of our different types use the issuable framework but one of the problems with that was it just wasn't very easy to make changes on a larger scale. Um, if you've ever heard of like someone saying like, oh, well, we'll have to make that change in both issues and epics. That's because it's on the issuables framework. Uh, the work items framework sort of seeks to solve that problem by saying like we can make a change in one place um, and it will propagate to all the different places that we're using the work items framework. Um, so I linked to their docs about that if you want to learn more. Um, but uh, we currently have some items using the work item framework, uh, tasks, OKRs, incidents, test case and requirements. Um, there are certain items that are currently on legacy objects, but migrations underway. So things like issues, epics, tickets. Um, and then there are some items that may never actually be work items, um, although TBD, um, MRs is one where there's been conversation about it maybe being a work item, maybe not. Um, the decision hasn't really been made there, um, but some items may not share that work item framework, uh, but a lot of items will. So um, coming into more of the problem that I was looking to solve with this particular project is that editing and updating attributes is not consistent across planning objects or other item types. And there are usability problems with each of the different patterns. So I'm going to jump out of slides for a second and just jump into, um, jump in, oh, that's big. Um, jump into an issue for a second. Um, take, for example, labels. Um, when you're sort of adding labels, um, you're maybe searching for things. Maybe they're not showing up exactly. Like I searched exactly for UX, but UX is showing up down here. I'm adding multiple labels, but it's not easy to see which labels I've selected. If I want to go back and unselect front end, I'd have to type it back in again, and unselect it. It's not easy to see. Um, and then there's a lot of different controls here. Like, how do I apply this? Does this clear them? Oh, no, nope, it doesn't clear them. It actually applies them. Um, there are a lot of usability issues with our current implementation with sort of legacy issues and epics. And similarly with um, tasks, which are on the work items framework, there are still a lot of um, usability issues. For example, like what does this X apply to? Um, does it apply to the left or the right? Um, there are issues around tab order um, and accessibility. So like if I tap, if I start up here, if I start tabbing through this page, it tabs onto Jackie, but it doesn't tab onto me. It tabs just directly into the component. Um, so there are a couple of different implementations of how we're selecting, viewing, et cetera, work item attributes, but there are some usability issues with both. Um, so really going back to my slideshow, um, our goals with this project were to improve the user experience of work items, um, which is currently tasks and OKRs when we were talking about planning objects. Um, so really improving the experience and interactions when you're viewing and editing metadata to make it easier to read, select, and remove metadata. But at the same time, we want to set the stage for the migration for issues and epics to work items. Um, so as we're migrating items onto the framework, we're trying to do this in an iterative way. So we're having situations now where, for example, tasks is on the work items framework, but issues and epics aren't. 
at some point in the migration, epics will be on the work items framework, but issues won't be. Um, and you know, as we've discussed before, like MRs may never be a work item, so they won't be on the work items framework. Um, so how do we think about minimizing disruption to users during that time period of migration, which you know we're talking about like at least a year here, um, while you know improving the user experience addressing some of those usability problems, but also maintaining alignment with the rest of the product and trying to keep like consistent experiences as we think about updating work items. Um, so specifically diving into the attributes um, for work items, there are a couple different um, different parts of this that I was thinking through. Um, so there's the actual interactions for getting into the editing state. Um, so on legacy issues and epics, we're using an edit button to toggle that edit mode versus on work items today, we're using a uh, click to inline edit. Ver and then the second part of this is actually like the selection or changing of the attribute. So like on issues and epics, we're using a select component um, versus on uh, work items, we're using uh, an input to add a label, um, or, you know, you can think of some of these changes as like an X versus, you know, the word clear versus like selecting the word unassigned to clear your selection. Um, so, you know, how do we think about these two different parts of it? Um, and again, like balancing that product consistency versus like making these usability improvements. Um, so I'm going to dive into Figma now. Um, so the first piece of this I'm going to talk about is the sort of getting into the editing state. Um, so for this, I actually made this um, sort of spectrum from current state, um, smaller change to larger change. So I explored quite a few different options for like how we might get into the editing state. Um, so this is like our current current example of clicking on the editing button, uh, clicking on the edit button, um, we could take this a little bit further and, you know, unbox, clean up, um, make this a little bit more concise, uh, give us the ability to have a little bit more information um, shown here. Uh, taking it another step further, like a, a, um, a larger change, you know, one, some of the feedback we've gotten is that this edit button is really repetitive. Um, so what if we used an icon instead, um, the pencil icon? Taking this another step further, what if it was only on hover? Um, and even a step further than that, um, which is what we're currently doing in work items today, what, what if they're click to inline edit? You just click on the item itself to open that editing state. Um, so thinking about those things on sort of a spectrum, from like a smaller change to a larger change, like what are the pros and cons of each? Um, and, you know, there are like, there are pros and cons to each, of course, like, you know, uh, on this side, like this is much more similar to what we have on issues and epics and MRs today. So as we're thinking about that migration path, we're not going to be experiencing the same sort of disconnect that if we were to go with something, you know, on the like larger change into the spectrum, we might be experiencing. Um, so those are some of the things that I was thinking through in terms of pros and cons. Um, and ultimately in, ter in terms of our recommendation um, for this period of migration, we are recommending that we move forward with having the edit button. Um, this will provide a lot of consistency with the patterns that we have today. Um, and something that we learned from our UX benchmarking study is that the real like usability difficulties with attributes are more in the like actual selection of them, not really getting to the edit state. Um, so we feel more confident sticking with the pattern that we have today for consistency versus moving in a bigger change direction. Um, and importantly, this doesn't prevent us from moving in that direction in the future. Um, once everything is on the work items framework, it's much easier to go in and say, okay, we want to make a larger change to our patterns. 
And then we can go in, make it in one place, and it propagates across everything that's using the work items framework, as opposed to right now we're in a situation where some types are using the work items framework, other types aren't. Um, so we have this sort of consistency issue. Like it'd be really weird if you went into an epic and the way that you were selecting labels, for example, was completely different than the way that you were selecting them for issues, for example. Um, so those are some of the things that we're thinking about. Um, and then the second piece um, of this is the actual like selection or changing of the attribute. And this is an area, especially with multi-select, where, you know, what we learned from our UX benchmarking study is that users do struggle, especially with multi-select, to view and um, apply and remove all of their different selections. Um, so this is something where we're proposing a slightly larger change because we know that there's a like very real usability problem behind this. Um, so for this, I proposed a couple different options to the team. Um, one that's a little more similar to what we're doing on issues and epics today. And then one that's a little more similar to what we're doing on uh, tasks and work items today. Um, so for the first option, um, we could just clean up the drop down a little bit, make it easy to uh, clear all, make it easy to apply your changes, or you could always click outside of it. Um, but you know, ultimately, this direction doesn't solve some of the problems that I was talking about. About once you've selected a bunch, it would be up here, like you know, front end plus five more selected. Um, it addresses some of the smaller usability problems, but maybe not some of the bigger ones. But on the flip side, this is a much smaller change. Um, so if we're thinking about consistency, uh, this is something that's very consistent with what our users expect um, for multi-select on MRs, issues, epics. Um, so the change there is much smaller. Um, versus the other approach that I uh, proposed is something that's a little more similar to um, to what we have on tasks and work items today, um, where you have an input, you start typing, it pops up an option, and it uh, when you select it, it pops up right in here. It's easy to see um, when I have like a, a bunch of them selected, it's easy to see them all. Um, I can easily X out of them to uh, remove them. But again, this is a this is a bigger change from what we have today. So like when you know when we're talking about the pros and cons, like. This is something that, you know, we'd have to align with the team. We'd have to, you know, make sure that the create team um, for MRs was on board with this. And it's something that they'd want to implement at some point because we wouldn't want to maintain two separate patterns for multi-select um, of attribute items. Um, and it's something that, you know, as we develop it, we'd want to make sure that we develop it in a reusable way so that it could be used on legacy issuables. Um, it, so that we could make sure that that, uh, that divergence didn't exist for a long time in the product. Um, so uh, that's, I wish I had a um, wrap up slide or something. Um, <laughs> that's about all I've got. Um, I'll stop sharing. If there's any questions in the doc, I can check. No questions in the doc, but I'll give I'll give everyone a couple minutes and try to do the Christie stare. All right, I think I've I think I've successfully done the Christie stare for a while. So I'm going to hand it back over to Andy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily. Wonderful presentation.